guys decide when you need to move to a bigger room? When the courthouse, when the courtroom is available. It's not. Or when, I mean, if it's not, you got to move Tim. All right, well, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, and I'm going to acknowledge Margie's over here. She's volunteered. I'm, I've asked her to, if she wouldn't film our meetings uh, for the time being and start helping us post those things online. Our, one of our goals is to make that information more readily available to the public. So until we get our own equipment, our own way of doing that, I've asked her to step in and fill for that. So don't anybody feel weird if she's filming you, but if you're wanted in any other state, you might want to turn away from the camera. So, okay. Um, call this meeting to order, and we are, would start off with public comment. Do we have, and we're trying to keep that to a couple of minutes a person. Do we have any public comments to start us off? Yes, I would like to make a public comment. My name is John Hansen. Um, in my opinion, as newly elected officials, your salary is paid out of tax dollars. No record of owing any, owning any property tax in District 3, therefore you do not pay any county property tax. I don't do uh, understand understanding that this is not illegal, but it is unacceptable and unethical. Any questions for what? I'll be honest, John, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, his salary, your salary, first salary, is all paid out of tax dollars. I got that. Yeah. In order for tax dollars to be generated, you have to pay property taxes or a part of property taxes. Go to that. If you don't own property, you don't pay property taxes. So therefore, his salary is paid with everybody else, but he's not contributing to it. I don't think that matters. The law doesn't say anything about that. I did say that it's illegal. It's well, not that's illegal. Funny. I said it says it's, it's not, not illegal. It's not unethical it's because it's not unethical. part of the Idaho Association of yeah. So that's how you're saving taxpayers' money. I I assume. Yes, we will. All right. Okay. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Is there anybody else with a comment this morning or a question, Mr. Avery? Well, I I just like to say that you know. This is new for you two, and really for Tracy too. She hasn't been here very long. It would seem like uh, you know whenever anybody starts a new business, there's always that third party audit that allows all the finances, every everything, all the cards on the table. And as these two as outgoing commissioners, I would think they would think it's a good idea too because it protects everybody. All the cards are put on the table. Is there a, a <laughs> statue, mandatory, anything like that that allows that for you we guys are. to we do that? We now? are audited. Uh, okay, but are you That's audited fine. for this? I mean, because <clears throat> we all run businesses and we know that you don't start out in the blind. There's a, an audit done every year um, by Hayden and Ross. It's a full county audit. Uh -huh. It's at all of our procedures all of our financial, it's posted online. We also have a single audit on our largest grant. Uh huh. Every year, and they're posted online. Don't we also randomly get audited by the state? No. Is that not we have true? different kinds of audits. Different kinds of audits. We just went through an audit on our election, and it just depends on the mistake because we're not at any time on anything. But I'm talking about just the finances, the way the finances, finances are, are done run. Through our audit okay. Through Hayden all right. Ross every year. And it would seem and like they're online. It yeah. sounds like a good idea that it should always be done. And if anybody doesn't approve of it, that would just be a red flag and a lot of questions that need to be answered. Right, okay. It's done annually, yeah, yep. every year. Thank you, Mr. Avery. Any further? Mr. Beener? Yeah, uh, the skid steer for the solid waste, I'm just wondering if that was on the expenditures for the put into the budget in the 2000, or in the May of last year's if it's in the budget even, and if it's gone through the procurement procedure, and uh, if it's not on the budget, then there's questionable whether it shouldn't even be on this. It's a regular meeting. It's not I think a, we're going to um, have Richard uh, address that information for us here shortly, and then we'll have another chance for comment afterwards. If thank you. Thank you for your concern. Anybody else? Okay. 
Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. Consideration of the minutes. Uh, Monday, January 2nd through Thursday, January 5th. Well, I'm going to make it motion that we're going to table that as you guys weren't here. I missed Wednesday's meeting. So we would like to have an opportunity to listen to that audio so that I can make sure the minutes do reflect what was. So two of us weren't in office and you weren't present for the. So we'll table that for a week. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. I agree. Second, Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. So we'll table that for a week and give Tracy a chance to listen to that since she was the acting commissioner at that time. All right. Um, moving on to new business, consent agenda, beer, wine, liquor licenses. I don't think we have anything today, right, Jasmine? Okay. Shoshone County prepays. I don't believe we have anything in that area either. Shoshone County Treasurer's Statement of Balances as of November and of December. Um, you've all had a chance to read that, look at that. We had about 10 million in uh, November and I think it was 12 or so in December, 12-7 in December. Any questions or comments about the balance? No, I want to go back to county prepays. Prepays? We, we did sign those. Mm -hmm. We did sign those. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, we did sign those, okay. Yeah. And approved, so there were prepays approved. Thank you for okay. bringing that out, uh, correction of my own error there. So we did sign the prepays, okay. Uh, any further comment on that? No, I just want to make sure we got them approved. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. Okay, we have a couple of resolutions in front of us. The first resolution approving credit card accounts and um, and then if I understand that right, Desmond, you'll publish all that after mm -hmm. we've approved that. But basically this updates, takes folks off the credit cards that shouldn't have them and puts the new folks on the credit cards, okay? And you both had a chance to look at that. Any questions or comments on that resolution? Fine, okay. The second resolution we had was to certify delinquent mobile home taxes mm -hmm. to real property uh, Prop BMH 01039 for the amount of $867. You both had a chance to look at that. Any questions or comments on that? No. No. Approve of that. Okay. And then we move to uh, something a little more interesting here. Approved solid waste purchase of skid steer. Richard Brenner, which I have not got to meet yet. Hi, Richard. Hi. Nice Richard. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Go ahead and fill us in on what, what we got here. You want the hot seat? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so to answer Mr. Beaner's question, um, we were approved $130,000 in our budget for a mini excavator, which we actually got through the grants instead. So the money is there. Um, we had It wasn't earmarked for a skid steer. We're kind of looking to just divert it to a skid steer now. Um, the skid steer that we have is a 1993. Um, I couldn't tell you how many hours on it because it's been swapped out too many times. Uh, it's very old, to say the least. It's been ran into the ground. The um, air current burner that we're putting in, it, it requires a <coughs> ash rake to clean it out. And the ash rake is in excess of 2,000 pounds. The skid steer that we have will lift it. I am concerned how well it's actually going to pull that ash out, though, because it's it's not it's designed to lift two thousand pounds. That's that's the tipping point of that particular model. So, trying to pull more with it, it's it's going to be iffy, and it's also going to be right now. We use that machine very minimal. We use it to sweep the floor couple times a week basically um, when we start using it for the air burner also it's going to put strain on that machine that it's just not going to be able to handle it okay so you're looking at just replacing that one asset with another you've already okay correct and yeah. how much was it, is the new one um so below eighty thousand dollars for the new one okay. i have three different bids um, we will go through uh, source well, um, so we're not actually putting out bids. I just have three source well 
um, different machines. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My, my look at Absolutely. That. Thanks. The the Bobcat quote in there, I went back and forth with a guy. He was not listening very well, um, but it's in there anyway. It's not the machine. The Bobcat machine is not the same machine as the John Deere and the Case. It's not the same. It's, it's not apples it's, to apples. It's not, exactly, it's not apples to apples. Okay. All right, so I misunderstood. I thought we were looking at an item that had already been approved by budget, but what you're, if I clarify what you're saying is, you've got that equipment that was budgeted for, and so now you're- Through the grant through instead. The grant. We did not use the money out of our budget. Okay. okay. So the money is in our budget. So they're just replacing one for the next day or mm -hmm. And it's great. approved for the grant, so it's not going to yeah. come out of county monies. And um, I've seen them. You've seen yeah. them. So you'll You've save money. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, we'll save over $50,000. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. If I could get copies of those so that I can put that, since it's the LAPCF that you're going to be using there, correct? Yep. No. No. It's something different. Yeah, no. This is coming okay. out of the transfer station budget. Got it. That okay. we already have for been approved for. Yeah. 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 yeah, we have already been approved for that in our budget. Perfect. Okay. Never mind. I withdraw. Okay. Any other questions? I, I do. So, yeah, I guess I was confused. Because other equipment that was purchased through the grant, we were able to afford this. Correct. Okay, gotcha now. Correct. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Oh, my brain cells tired. We got this. And tell me one more time, what's the total amount you expect to spend? So the case, so far? the case skid steer in there is by far the better machine. Um, it's also available within two months. The John Deere is six to eight months out and the Bobcat is uh, four to six months out. Um, the case machine is 78000 and that comes with a full five-year, 5,000-hour warranty. Okay. And that's the solid tires we need. That's set up, ready to go for what we need. Okay. Any further discussion or questions or no. motions? Entertain a motion. I'm okay with it. Uh, I would make a motion to approve the skid steer. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. No. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Yeah, just want to make sure we we're okay on that one, but you're right, we'll do that. Good point. Okay, mm -hmm. so looks good. Thank okay. you. Thank, right. you, for Thank you very much. Okay, the second one we have in front of us is the ITD grant, and Charlie is going to give us some information on that. Okay. So, I'm Charlie Gay, uh, this is my wife and partner, Becca, <laughs> back here. <laughs> I know her. <laughs> um, and so, what I thought I'd do is give you just a brief kind of rundown of what we do, and then we can talk about this bus a little bit. <clears throat> Um, so the Silver Express um, bus, which is actually Shoshone County Transit is the official name, but um, we call it Silver Express, started in January 2012. Um, you guys might remember the old NICE bus, North Idaho Community Express. Um, they, were, they were operating here and for one reason or another the funding kind of fell apart. And so um, the state had the funding and they approached the county and said, we have this funding for a bus transit system. Um, and so it took about a year um, and, that, that, and they contacted us and we went out with a stopwatch and figured out bus stops and we talked to all the businesses and city councils and, and came up with a route. Um, and so the route really hasn't changed much in 12 years. We just added some stops. Um, in Smelterville this fall at the new stores there at the new intersection uh, the new grocery store and stuff 
Um, so that's kind of a little bit of history. We have three services that we provide. Uh, the fix, fixed route, which is 40 bus stops from Kingston to Mullen. Uh, we had just under 15,000 passengers in 2022, which is about 20% lower than pre-COVID numbers. We never have really, and that's statewide really. No one, none of the transit agencies have recovered yet from pre-COVID numbers. Um, we also run a paratransit. This is required by the federal grant. Uh, it's a door-to-door -door service for disabled people that can't get to a bus stop to use the fixed route. And so they have a form that they have to have a medical professional sign um, stating that they do in fact have a disability. Um, and we had just under 1,100 passengers in 2022 on that service. Um, those people, uh, the paratransit passengers, just call and schedule through the office um, and then we, they're, they, both ends of their trip have to be within three quarters of a mile of the fixed route. So we can't go way up the river or something like that. Um, the, and then the third service we provide is the Coeur d'Alene route. Uh, so on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we go over in the mornings. Uh, we can hold up to nine people in the bus. Um, we drop off in Coeur d'Alene and Hayden at around nine o'clock. And then we start picking back up around 10, 30, 11. So they're in Coeur d'Alene for about two hours. Um, and we had about 1,153 passengers in 2022. Um, so just a summary of our vehicles that we have right now. Uh, van number two has about 250,000 miles on it. It's currently not running. This is one of the original vehicles that we got from ITD when we first started. It was actually one of the nice, nice vans. So that's how it's a 2008, I think. Um, we were having some computer issues in the in the transmission and so he's had Tom's Auto does all the service and he's having trouble getting parts. Um, so that one I talked to him yesterday and it's the computer part is in Florida right now it's been rebuilt I think they're on their third time they sent it up to Tom and it would not start the van and so he had to send it back to Florida and they're working on it right now and we don't know if it's going to work or not. So that's the oldest one. We had planned on replacing this van this year anyway. Um, it's just happening a little sooner than we had, than we had planned on. Um, bus number three uh, was purchased new by the county uh, with grant funds and donations in 2016 uh, for about $60,000. It has about 215,000 miles on it. Bus number four was purchased new with grant funds and donations in 2018 for about 70,000 with 112,000 miles on it. Uh, both of those purchases, we had tons of community support from the hospital, from Heritage Health, from we did, and um, we're, we've talked about doing that again. And I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, so the future bus number five, we were approved for grant funds to purchase a new bus, approved by ITD. Uh, the county submitted a grant application. Um, the cost for a new bus has risen to $113,000. So just in a couple of years, or four years, I guess. And actually, when we did the grant application, the estimates I got from the bus company were 83,000. So in one year, it went up mm -hmm. like 20 or 30,000 dollars. <coughs> so we were struggling a little bit with how we were gonna come up with the county match of 22,600. And then the state approached us and said, hey, we have, um, there's a transit agency down in Southern Idaho, Southeast Idaho that went on, is no longer functional and they had a bunch of buses um, and so ITD has a used bus available um, that they'll give free to the county that has about 50,000 miles on it um, and this is what it looks like <clears throat> so it's basically the same thing as our other ones doesn't have a ton of stickers that we're going to have to pull off or anything that's the one I've got right. that's the yeah. pictures yeah what what years years on our license on that so Do you remember what year 16 I can't remember, I can't remember. 2016. Um, so the cost, we will have some costs. It's down in Boise right now. Um, so we're going to have to send a driver down there to get him drive up. Um, we'll, so we'll have those delivery costs. We'll have to put some decals. Um, it currently doesn't have the snow chains that we put on them here. Um, we put that, a bike rack and some snow tires. And so I'm estimating about $10,000. Uh, the county match for that and part of the grant is 20%. Um, so the county share for those costs would be about two thousand. Um, we also have some money through the CARES Act um, that may be available to cover those costs, and so 
Um, but the most that I would see you spending it would be two thousand dollars <coughs> to get the for this brand new bus or not brand new but brand new to us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, we had, um, like I said earlier, we've got um, we've. The buses now we have stickers on the side from people that have donated in the past, um, and so Hecla Mining was a was a big donator on the second bus, the 2018 bus. Um, but we've gotten we've gotten contributions from um, the hospital and Heritage Health, and we had one of the churches donate a couple thousand dollars. Um, but all in all, it was about $100,000 over several years that we got in donations. And that also includes, um, the county also gets money each month from area of aging that helps mm -hmm. with the operations. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, so instead of buying a brand new bus for $113,000, uh, we would like to get this bus from ITD um, for basically free other than the cost to get it here. <coughs> And then that what, so what that'll do is that will replace van number two. Um, we would probably put this new bus on the fixed route and then redo our, our asset plan a little bit to try to minimize miles on that bus number three so that we can make it last as long as we can. <coughs> okay, so where is the county match coming from? Well, do we have a budget? Yeah, we have a Fund for yeah, the express fund. Fund. Mm -hmm. So we have a budget that would cover. I don't know that would cover twenty thousand dollars. Two thousand or two thousand. Two thousand will be fine. fine. Um, and yeah. the, and there's a possibility that the CARES Act might cover some of that. that might, so and then and then also I think we need to um, we haven't asked for these donations for several years right. and, I, and I think we could probably get much more than two thousand dollars. In okay. donations, if we just start that process, community is generally. really supportive of this yeah. asset. In fact, Colleen went to a meeting to the summit this fall, and one of the things she came back with was the rest of the state going, "How do you get your community to participate <laughs> like this?" So we're really lucky that way. Congratulations! Okay, Commissioner Zimmerman, any questions or no thoughts on that process? Any further thoughts from you? Okay. So what you need from us is, I think you have in front of you, just it's just a change to the scope of the grant. Right, so that right there, and on this um, first page, and, there, and this also I have reference to, but I mean this talks about the, so what this originally was was 97,000, but because of the transfer bus, um, they changed the scope because we wouldn't need that now to 27,000, and that was intended to pay for the titling and, and everything that needs to be done but because it is 5339, there is that 20% match on that. So the grant is for the 277878. Um, and it says right here what the scope is, that it's just the, the cost for that 2016 van, um, the Eldorado, the Eldorado van, Eldorado. to get it taken care of and <clears throat> titled and transferred over to the county. Um, so that's what that is, is you know standard verbiage. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to read through mm -hmm. that, but it's, it's just kind of the basic everything from ITD that says, we're gonna give you this money, here's your obligations to us and our obligations to the Federal Transit Administration um, to make sure I've, that you guys have what you need. I read through all the federal <laughs> Isn't that fun? That's amazing. <laughs> uh, we'll build a tree for that one. Yes. <laughs> okay, all right. So, do we have any, any more discussion or entertain for a motion? I have no more discussion. Can I, excuse, can I ask one question? Or didn't we put some money out of that four billion into the sewer express bus last week? Yes. So that was thirty thousand, was it? Am I right? And, and that could be used for that. The right. Thirty thousand was. Commissioner Dose was wondering where was budget, but it's yeah. correct. We get it for the future for. For four years. So that's so there's sure. no problem on that. We so did that last week. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. To interrupt. No. Good. Yeah. Good. Good information. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. <coughs> All right. Uh, any, if we don't have any further discussion on that, then I guess we're to the approve of the consent agenda. Uh, we've discussed everything on here. Do you have any further comment or question on the consent agenda? No. Okay. Take entertain a motion. 
do a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion mm -hmm. made. Consent, yep. And table the old business for next week. And we've tabled yep. the old business for next week. Okay, and, and you second I will that? second that. Thank you. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Charlie. Megan, nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you guys thank you. for taking time to be here. Appreciate that. Uh, and thank you to the, the public. We have a we have a, another opportunity for public comment for questions. Do we have any any further public comment or questions? Yeah, we we'll only get one bid. Is that is there broker fees associated with that bid? So going through SourceWell, it's a government um, supply site basically. Mm -hmm. um, so they do all the basically they do all the bidding and everything for government agencies. And I do have three different bids in here. No, I from um, what, from the broker you got three different bids. Um, from three different, I did not get three bids from the broker. I got three bids from three different. Uh, dealerships that go through source well. Okay. Yes. So there's no broker fees. No, no, no. It is a it's a free service to government entities to try to slimline the process. Basically, it saves us money mm -hmm. by going through them. And I forgot. Uh, the the clerk reminded me to remind people. Please state your name when you ask questions. Sorry. <laughs> now that the meeting's <laughs> over, I got that. Out. Okay, I think Thank I got you. It. That was Mr. Beaner. Any further questions? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Any further comment or questions from the audience? Seeing none. All right. Uh, we need to move towards executive session. So, um, for Idaho Code 74206D, indigent cases consideration. So. Uh, do we need a motion to move yeah, into that, right? Yes, roll call vote. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I'll make motion first. Yeah, I'll make a motion for executive session <coughs> of the 74 to 60 for Second. indigent cases. Seconded. Okay. And Commissioner roll call Cassidy? Vote. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Dose? Yes. Commissioner Zimmerman? Here. Okay. 